What's up, Professor Wallacord? Back again uh, in your second class. This time I will be talking about Chapter 14 in the Bisla textbook on capacity and legality. So we'll start this time four to six minutes, so a little shorter. We'll get through it. Main points pretty quick. So for 14.1, contractual capacity. So by definition, this law has been given for special protection to those who bargain with the inexperience of youth and those who lack the degree of mental competence required by law. So I'll get into it more. So a lot of it has to do with um, being of age, being 18 or older to have these own contracts, being li held liable when you're of that age. It's not always your parents are going to be looking out after you. Uh, you get to a certain age where that's just not a non-existence. Um, but with the inexperience and lack of degree, if there's issues with mental competence, I'll get into more of that later with how contracts can be voided, uh, the voidance of it, and also um, if it's valid. Sorry. So, so in other situations, a party may have the capacity to enter into a valid contract, but also the right to avoid liability under it, which leads to, as I said, the minor part of it. So minority status may be terminated by a minority's emancipation if um, the law of minors... Uh, is stated to avoid contracts. So if that's the case, can be enforced, emancipated uh, by a minor to avoid that contract. And then that leads to disaffirmance, which is a big key word in this chapter, which is the legal avoidance or setting aside of a contractual obligation. So minors pretty much have to state their intent through words and actions and uh, uh, con through conduct. You can't like sugarcoat over it. Um, as a minor. So an adult who enters the contract with a minor cannot have the duties on the ground that a minor can because it's more the minor's business and doesn't have much to do with the parents anymore of legal age. Um, so that leads to ratification, which is the act of acceptance and giving legal force to an obligation that previously was not enforceable. So example would be law and rule, say breaking or following, you can't be given a certain stature if you're following the law a certain way, if you're breaking it in a certain way, um, and if it's deemed legal or illegal based on the capacity and contractual capacity of it. Uh, so essentially, a minority who has reached the age of authority can ratify the contract. So once they reach 18, it's up to them. Parents' liability goes away, um, but you can still, say, be under different insurance plans, car insurance, health insurance, uh, based on if your parents are okay with that, but 18 is when you become an adult and you have the opportunity to move away and move on with your own life as well. Uh, so we'll talk about mental incompetence. So to void contracts, void contracts, this is if a person is mentally incompetent, period. Uh, voidable contracts can happen when a person is mentally incompetent at the time that the contract was formed and lastly, uh, it is valid if at the time the person was mentally competent when the contract was formed. So it's really all about the forming of the contract, the signing of it, the reading over it, uh, which is deemed important more so than anything. So that is a lot to do with contractual capacity. And just the brief, so I'm at 340, talk two and a half minutes about legality. So legality for a contract to be valid and enforceable it must be formed for a legal purpose. So you can't just form a contract that leads to nowhere. There has to be an actual purpose to it. Otherwise, the courts and everything else won't take it seriously. Uh, any contract to commit a crime is a violation of stature. So any crime, this could be something as, I shouldn't say simple, something as in selling drugs, which is a crime that's deemed illegal and it's a violation of the stature. Uh, usury, uh, different charges for transactions, gambling is another issue, which is a creation of risk for your own property and your own mental state as well. So that has a lot to do with the mental competence and incompetence. If you're there, or you're not there. Uh, so different examples of professions, like you have to be, say, a teacher in schooling, a doctor, so on, so, so on and so forth for professions to uh, be deemed credible there. Uh, on conch unconscionable contracts i've butchered that or clauses a court doesn't look at the fairness of equity of a contract but bargains such as bargains that are looked at they can become grossly unfair and a void of conscience uh could be writing printed 
or just on worded documents. So basically these are often public policies, not much to do in private, could be seen as cheating, illegal, etc. So if a court to violate, uh, let's say expectancy clauses, sorry, I'm terrible with my wording. When it's released a party from a Eli illegal liability in the event of a monetary, no matter who is at fault. Uh, so that's misconduct, can be fraud, there's bad influencers, got 30 seconds, I got this. Effective illegality is also an issue here. An illegal contract is void, then the court will not aid it. Uh, property, both are equally at fault. Includes justifiable ignorance of the facts, members of protected classes, and withdrawal from an illegal agreement. And so lastly, with an indivisible contract, complete performance by each party is essential. If it's divisible, a court may enforce the legal portion, but not the illegal one.